What we do here is go back, 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 back. When Bungie came to naming their Covenant species, they named them very literally and in a manner that tied them in directly with their gameplay and design. The Grunts were called the Grunts because they were the low-ranking cannon fodder that threw themselves at you in large numbers with the weakest guns, working under the authority of a higher-ranking figure in their battalions. They look like the weak ones too, smaller in size, with higher-pitched voices that ran away in fear if you killed their leader. The Jackals were called the Jackals because they were the feral scavengers that knew they weren't adequate enough to fight you fairly in battle, so they brought a shield along with them. Their voices were really raspy and guttural, really infitting with their feral nature, and their avian-like face with odd spiky feathers combined with their massive teeth fits this feralness by making them look so savage in nature. The Hunters were called the Hunters because they came in small packs and were rarely seen throughout the campaign, but when they were seen, they were hyper deadly. You were the prey and the only way to beat the one hunting you was to outmaneuver them and hit their weak spot. They put you on the back foot immediately the second you encountered them, forcing you to completely change up your gameplay to hit one of those two, those two tiny weak spots where you could deliver significant damage. The spikes on their back allow them to silently and telepathically communicate with their bond brother, which removes the need for loud voices and to always make sure they could get the jump on their prey. The elites were called the elites because of their position in the hierarchy, they were the leaders of the Grunts, the ones who ordered the Jackals around, and who entered the fight last when their minions had fallen before you to finish the sloppy work that they started. They fought, moved, and behaved in an elegant yet deadly manner. The way they tower themselves above the Grunts and Jackals gives them a sense of authority, but the way they carry themselves, from their posture to their armour, gives off a real sense of nobility. The way they strafe and combat roll and chase you with an energy sword is graceful and deadly, but in a silent and stealthy manner. Their physical design is tall yet slender, making them hard to hit agile targets with as small of a silhouette as possible to really reinforce their stealthy and elegant deadliness. If I had to sum up how the elites look and behave in five words, they would be noble, elegant, graceful, and stealthily deadly. All in all, their characters made them elite. The elites themselves were heavily inspired by Predator, an alien that, in my opinion, is the absolute definition of noble, elegant, graceful, and a stealthily deadly warrior that hunts from the shadows using camouflage and its insane intelligence and combat knowledge to outmaneuver the enemy, even when itself is heavily outnumbered. In my honest opinion, the post-Halo 4 Elite design fails to meet even one of these criterion to designate it an Elite. Not once, not once, have any of the new Elite designs, even the Arbiter in Halo 5 with his badass Kaiden armor, ever resonated any of these five words from their design or their behavior. If you disagree with me, then please let me know in the comments because I am genuinely intrigued, just pure intrigued, to see any instance where they resonate these words. So, what's wrong with the new Elite design, and do they have a place in Halo's future? Well, the answers are, <laughs> a lot is wrong, and believe it or not, yes, yes they do have a place in Halo's future. Let's first begin, however, with what's wrong with them from an anatomical standpoint. 
The classic elites had sleek and streamlined heads, meant to promote a smaller silhouette which plays into their stealth, whereas the new elites just go completely against that. Their heads and necks are extremely wide and are absolutely massive in comparison. The combat helmets that the classic elites wore, aside from the honor guard helmet of course, also promoted this sleek and low profile style. They complemented the head shape instead of building off of it. This was completely changed with the new elites. Their helmets somehow managed to be even bigger than their fucking heads and have so many variants that stick up and stick out and completely break and change their silhouette which destroys any shred of stealth or elegance that the elites once had. Even the zealot helmet, which is meant to promote these two traits in particular, is fucking massive. A monster truck driven by Terry Crews is stealthier than the zealot helmet. The classic elite's mandibles were small and had plating built into their helmets to specifically protect them, given how important they are for an elite to function. They quite literally need their mandibles to be able to speak. This completely went out the window with their new design, where their mandibles are huge and take up 75% of the space on their face. They aren't even well protected by their helmets at all, which is weird because the helmets actually do have mandible plating, but for some reason it just doesn't cover them. Oh, and let's not forget to mention how the new Elite's mandibles quite literally falsified Darwinism. How the hell did a species evolve to have teeth parallel to its eyes? Every time it talks or contracts its mandibles, their teeth must quite literally go into their eyes. This makes genuinely zero sense from any standpoint. Ah, moving down to the torsos, and again, the classic elite's body armor really complements their body shape. It doesn't seek to enlarge or change their silhouette, and in all fairness, even though I don't like how it looks, the new Elite's torso armor doesn't really do that either. The problem is, weirdly, the same problem that I have with 343's Spartan armor design. The chest piece just doesn't feel like part of an overall suit of armor. It feels more like a harness that's just been slipped on. This doesn't fit the Elite's nature, in my opinion, because they should be wearing full, actual sets of armor, designated for a specific role to fit their place within the military hierarchy and to give a sense of nobility too, but that's more of a subjective thing. I understand if you don't agree with that. Now, the arms are a major issue. The classic elites had black undersuits that covered their arms, much like special forces of the modern day, to make them stand out as little as possible, really playing into their stealthy deadliness. On top of this, their arms were really well armoured with plating covering and also protecting as much of the arm as possible without restricting movement and their shoulder pads were sleek and complemented the shape of the arm along with being slightly angular and sharp to really convey their deadliness and most of all they didn't exacerbate their silhouette. The arms of the new elites, however, are the complete polar opposite of this and break the five cardinal characteristics of an elite. The lack of arm armour showing their feral scales and claws isn't noble, nor is it elegant. Their extremely feral looking hands, in particular, are extremely far from graceful, and the shoulder pads that protrude from their arms, casting an entirely new silhouette almost the size of their damn heads, are so far from being stealthily deadly that it's not even funny. I honestly think that if you just added a black undersuit to the arms and made the shoulder pads more flat and streamlined, they could almost look fine. Moving on to the legs and feet and my oh my, what the hell went wrong here? Now, the classic elites had really weird feet. I always said that for like the past 13 years. I've always noted how the elite's feet look like trotters, but they were never so big that it caused an issue. They were small, which allowed them to be as nimble and quiet on their feet as possible, playing into their low profile mannerisms and behaviors. Well, that all changed after Halo 4. Their feet suddenly expanded to twice the size of their head. 
which is really saying something considering how fucking big their heads are. They're also covered in massive, heavy foot armor with levers coming off them to the point where every footstep must cause like a 7.1 earthquake on four different colonies or something. Throw the envoy out the air. This, combined with how chunky their overall body is, now makes it literally impossible for them to be stealthy or move in an elegant or graceful way, and it's impossible to be noble when you break the cardinal rules that make your species what they are. They're still deadly, but just for a completely different reason. They're deadly in the way that a brute would be deadly, not in the way an elite would or should ever be deadly. Overall, this new design is loud, hyper-aggressive, savage, heavy, bulky, and generally more brutish in nature than elite. If you were to show a picture of these elites to a group of people with absolutely no knowledge about Halo whatsoever, and ask them if this alien is called a brute, or an elite, I absolutely guarantee that 10 out of 10 times the answer would be brute. Okay, let's move on to their behaviour and mannerisms now. Now, in the gameplay, the elites have actually changed very little, because there isn't much room for them to change at all. This was the case with their aesthetic design, but at least 343 stuck to it with their gameplay. They're still nimble and fast moving, and even quite acrobatic at times, which is really fucking weird when you consider how bulky and unagile their body and armour is now. The places where the behaviour and mannerisms are an issue, however, is in the cutscenes, where the elites don't have to stick to a strict set of gameplay animations or traits. And my, oh my, whew. Honestly, the only word I can use to describe how they move and behave in the cutscenes is simply incorrect, like, it, it's just wrong. I can genuinely say that I've never seen a more incorrect interpretation of a species before, and I'm going to use two cutscenes, both are from Halo 5, to demonstrate my point. The first is the end cutscene of the first mission, and it's the pinnacle, the absolute pinnacle, of what's wrong with the Elite's mannerisms. Watch how this Elite just lumbers towards Vale, like he weighs 900 fucking pounds. He has no agility, no grace, he just drops his carbine and drags himself towards her, before getting thrown off the fucking cliff and falling to what is an extremely embarrassing death. And you know what? That Elite was a fucking zealot. It was one of the highest ranking Elites in Julum Dharma's Covenant. And that was how he met his end. Just look at how Jul died too. He's the head, the leader, technically the most noble of them all within his faction. And look how heavily he tries to fight back against Locke. He doesn't make any small movements or subtle adjustments. He just swings his sword and misses, which makes his ridiculous body mass cause him to almost topple over like a broken weeble, before getting Locke to just climb all over him like a fucking iron giant. So much is wrong with the elites in this scene, you could genuinely look at each and every one of them and spot not one of the five cardinal characteristics of an elite. Not one. The second cutscene is at the start of Blue Team, the second mission, and it specifies not only what's wrong with their movement, but their voices too. To start off with the voice, the Halo 2 Elites, which I consider the peak of the Elite design, <laughs> if you didn't notice yet, spoke with a sense of nobility. They have shed our brother's blood, and for that they must die. From their voice alone, you could tell that they were a very noble, self-respecting species. Their voices were definitely deep and low, but not so much that it'd fall into the realm of savagery and brutality. All you have to do is listen to Artas' speech at the beginning of the Arbiter, and I absolutely guarantee you'll get that feeling. On the blood of our fathers, on the blood of our sons, we swore to uphold the covenant, even to our dying breath. Those who would break this oath are heretics, worthy of neither pity nor mercy. Even now, they use our Lord's creations to broadcast their lives. We shall grind them into dust and continue our march to glorious salvation. 
they have the deep voices to reinforce their place in the Covenant hierarchy and their squads, where they're of course above and in charge of the Grunts and the Jackals, but their tone has a real inherent eliteness to it. I can't quite describe it, it just sounds inherently superior. Then you listen to their voices in Halo 5 specifically. The Ungoy are resisting. <sighs> Throw the Ungoy at the airlock. And all they are is deep. They're way, way, way too deep. They sound so stereotypical of an evil, big, bad, aggressive alien. And again, they sound more like brutes. Their voices have absolutely no variation in pitch whatsoever. They're just so monotonal and deep and are a real disservice to the elites as a species. But that's not all from this cutscene. Oh, hell no, that is not all from this cutscene. Look at how this elite commander walks. Specifically, look at how his arms and torso move as he walks. His entire upper body rotates with every step and his arms are set really far from his body, both which make him look like he weighs like 700 pounds and he's trying to walk without his arms rubbing against his stomach. He literally has to rotate his body away from the arm that he's swinging so he can get it past. This is probably the least elite thing that I've ever seen from these new elites and just stick a massive finger up to the five cardinal characteristics of the elite. It's just plain wrong, man. It's just, it's just wrong. This is probably the least elite thing that I've ever seen from the new elite design, and it just sticks a massive finger up to the five cardinal characteristics of an elite. You want to see cutscenes where the classic elites look noble, gracious, elegant, and stealthily deadly? Easy. The intro to the Arbiter in Halo 2. The intro to Quarantine Zone in Halo 2. Artas going to deal with the Flood just before the gondola section of Quarantine Zone in Halo 2, the Arbiter assassinating Truth in Halo 3, and that is just to name a few. Even though the Halo 3 animations are done by hand and not mocap, which makes it look like Arbiter's feet are literally glued to the floor, he still looks miles better and miles more elite than anything, literally anything that we've seen in Halo 4 or Halo 5. So, so far we've discussed why their anatomical design, armor design, and sound design, literally every single aspect of them, isn't even close to being elite. With this in mind, how the hell can I then go on to say that I think they actually have a place in the future of Halo, as elites? Well, to begin with, it would be extremely hypocritical for us to want to completely remove all trace of the new elite design. Because, believe it or not, and <laughs> yes, I have trouble wrapping my head around this too, there are actually a few people out there who do prefer the new Elite design, and you know what? All power to them. It'd make us guys who want the classic, iconic Elite design back as bad as those who want it completely retconned and removed. From a more practical standpoint, however, there are actually a few places that I think they could fit in. I've spoken before about different subspecies of enemies playing different roles in one game, specifically the Jackals, with the Rutian Jackals being the snipers and marksmen, and the Ibishan Jackals being the general infantry with shields. You know what? The same applies to the Elites. I can see the new brutish Elite subspecies being the one that uses heavy weaponry like plasma turrets and fuel rod guns, and the classic elite subspecies, likely the Halo 2 anniversary design, filling the role of general infantry, marksmen, zealots, ultras, spec ops, and literally every single other role. I do think that the new design could be fitted to heavy weaponry, and I think that that's the best thing to do in Halo 6, introduce both designs alongside each other. Not just with the elites though, with all of the Covenant species too, just like in Halo Wars 2, where you have the new, more feral looking grunts as suicide grunts, and the classic, iconic grunt design as the regular infantry. I know it's extremely ambitious and resource heavy to include multiple designs of the same species, but 343, I'm quite literally begging you right now, the elites need it. Right now, the design that represents the elites in your games do not look, do not behave, and do not sound like elites. <sighs> Throw the Ungoy out the airlock. Like, at all. 
as I've explained, <laughs> on a very, very technical level. At the very, very least, for Halo 6, please just give the Arbiter the correct Elite design. We know that on a canonical level, he's not the new design, so please just give us his correct look and design in Halo 6, at the very, very least. So, in closing, the classic Elite design returning is absolutely paramount. Above all other artistic choices in Halo 6, this should be right at the top of the list. If they do return, I can see the design being Halo 2 Anniversaries, which I and most other people would be very, very happy with. Aside from a few minor things, they look fantastic, and you know what? They perfectly represent the Elites. Having both designs alongside each other, just filling different roles, ideally the ones that I previously specified, would definitely be the best way to go in my opinion, but please, for the love of all that is Halo, just make sure the Arbiter has his Halo 2 anniversary design and looks canonically correct in Halo 6, please, thank you. So that's it for the Elites, thanks a lot for watching guys, especially if you made it to the end, major fucking props, you are an absolute trooper. If you agree with any of the points that I raised in this video and you want that beautiful, sleek, classic, iconic elite design back, then, then please like this video, leave a comment, and also share the living hell out of it so people know that there is a substantial amount of us out there who really just want our old dino buddies back. Also, I hope you enjoyed that intro. It's very iDubs content cop inspired, but hey, it fit the video, right? What we do here is go back, go back, go back, back to the classic art style, eh? <laughs> Aren't I a fucking joker? 343, if you watch this video, I appreciate so much you guys taking the time to listen to our complaints. We've already seen you acting on them with post-launch Halo 5 content and also Halo Wars 2, and it has made so many of us so happy. So why stop there? But seriously though, honestly, the effort you guys put into listening to us whinge and rant about the most specific artistic details is crazy, and the fact that you act on it is even crazier. So thank you, legitimately, thank you guys so much. I really hope we see more of that bea beautiful classic art style in Halo 6, because you know what? If we do, I will legitimately buy each and every one of 343's art team a Chipotle when I'm next in the US. I promise that I will do. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.